Hello everybody, welcome to another video on data science. Today I'd like to review a performance or package. If you do some modeling, you probably know that estimating the quality of the model is sometimes complicated. First of all, there are several different uh, indicators like AC, R squared, etc. And secondly, they are spread around different packages. So this package performance unites all of them under one roof. And that's why amazing. I cannot recommend it uh, strongly enough. I use it every day in my working life as a statistician, and it made my life much easier. So the second thing about this package you will learn from this video is that it also unites all the assumptions and lets you check the assumptions easily and quickly. And the problem is the same. Usually the assumptions can be checked from different packages with different commands, but in this package it cannot be easier. So let's get straight into it. In order to use this package you first have to install it, but since I already installed it I just have to load it. And I cannot be thankful enough to the authors of this package, especially the first author Daniel Ludeke and the others. They are amazing developers. With this out of the way, let's get to our first model. Imagine a multiple linear model without interactions with two predictors. And if we run it, we want to check the model performance. And <laughs> incredibly, the model performance can be checked with the function model performance. And you immediately see the archaics information criteria, Bayesian information criteria, R square, and even adjusted R squared, which you need if you have several predictors in your model. But let's go one step further and make a more complex model, for example, mixed effect model, and even add interactions to it. So we have a multiple linear model, we have interaction in it, we have another variable without interaction, and we have random effect. So we first have to install and load the package LME4, and then we can run this model. Again, simply by using model performance, it gives you everything. Especially, it gives you the conditional R square, which is the goodness of fit for the whole model, and marginal R square, goodness of fit of only fixed effects, of only predictors. We see that in this model, we actually do not need random effects because the R squares are identical. So, model performance seems to be useful, but what if we have very, very complex and fancy model, for example, mixed effect model with interaction and it's supposed to be Bayesian one. Again, we uh, load the package which needs to be loaded, then we get the model running and it will take a while, so I might skip this. Before I skip everything, you see that this is a Bayesian model, we have interaction in it, we have another predictor without interaction, and we have complex random effect with the random intercept and even random slow. The model finished running, I just removed this, and let's check the performance of this model. And amazingly, we have even more indicators of model quality. You see that only using model performance, you can check the quality of almost any model out there. However, the performance package doesn't stop here. Imagine we have several models and we already did produce several models. We can also compare performance of several models and rank them to see which model is better or worse. And the function uh, couldn't be more intuitive. The function's name is compare performance. Let's take only two models and compare, and you see that the models are not in the same type. Usually you're not allowed to compare it. Unfortunately, a lot of researchers are doing this, and me too. And uh, compared to the usual ANOVA function, which would not allow you to do comparison of the usual normal linear regression and mixed effects linear regression first, we can trick it out and use this comparison also, and that's what I did in my past. Fortunately and amazingly actually, this package compares the models immediately, but warns you that they are not the same type and comparisons of indices might not be meaningful. How amazing is that? So that's why here I created a similar model, a model which also has random effects and no interaction between predictors. So if we run this model and then compare performance, there will be no warning. 
and we can see that the model with interactions has 71% of scoring and the performance score is always 100%. So it doesn't matter how many models you have, these 100% will be distributed along the models. And we can say that the first model or the model with interaction is better than the model without interactions. We also can see, if you look at the indicators of model quality, that the model without interactions is actually better for predictions because a cake's information criteria and Bayesian information criteria are kind of indicators for predictions quality of the model. However, the model with interaction has a better fit. That's what R square is telling us. Interestingly, we not only can compare models with each other, we also can plot this comparison and immediately see what is going on. And here, similarly from this table of comparisons, we see that the model without interaction is better for predictions and models with interaction is better for describing the data or maybe for the inference for your current data. All right, so we have a lot of different indicators, but sometimes you only need one and you want to report it. So you not always need all of them. And it is possible with the performance package, for example, R squared can be checked by simply typing function R squared. And if we do this for the mixed model, the R squared also tells you what kind of R squared it is namely R squared for the mixed model and it shows you both conditional with random effect and marginal R squared without random effect. If we look at the Bayesian R squared, it even gives you the credible intervals for it. How amazing is that? I really love it. There are also possibility to get other um, individual indicators of quality, for example, intra-class correlation coefficient it is similar to the R squared. It also shows a percentage of the variance explained in the model. And if we look at this, we will also get it for conditional ICC and for adjusted. All right, let's move to the second very useful ability of this package, checking assumptions. So first of all, we have our model M like this. This is a multiple linear model. We also have other models like linear mixed effect model with random effects in it. And simply by typing check model, we will be able amazingly check all the assumptions at once. How amazing is that? It made my life so much better. For example, it checks whether there is a collinearity in this model. And usually, if the variation inflation factor, which is on the y-axis, is below 5, there is a low correlation. It even shows you green light to go with the model. The model is OK in this regard or with this assumption. If the variation inflation factor is below 10, it would be moderate and still be OK. So let's move further, for example, to the normality of residuals. It also shows you that the residuals are kind of normally distributed. The second plot also tells you that they are not perfect, but still the residuals are kind of normally distributed. But the Homoscheda sees the assumptions, which is supposed to show whether the really changing variance in the residuals is not good. You see that residuals are getting wider to the end of the plot, and this is the clear indication for heteroscedasticity. It even shows you influential points, so there are some influential points in this model. All right, now let's check the mixed effect model. Can we do this too? And amazingly, yes, we can check any kind of complicated model with interaction, with random effects, and we can check assumptions of any model with uh, check model function. So if we look at the multicollinearity, we see that the correlation is high. So these predictors or combinations of predictors like this interaction 
is disturbing the model, is making our model not realistic. And usually for the interaction, there is an unwritten rule that if the variation inflation factor is below 20, it would be kind of acceptable. But since the variation inflation factor here is so high, we're supposed to do something against it. Then the residuals are kind of not normally distributed because they go out of the confidence intervals, not only in the ends, which would be kind of acceptable, but also in the center of the variable. The second plot also shows us that residuals are not normally distributed but skewed to one side. So we have to check for it and do something against it. However, in this model, we have no heteroscedasticity, which is a good thing. So you see, you can check all the assumptions at once with this amazing function, check model. However, sometimes our boss or ourselves or the editor of the paper wants to see the proof that some assumptions was checked. And I usually just produce some plot or the p-value and send it to the reviewer or to the boss. And of course, performance package can do this. If it can do everything, it can also do the singular things. For example, if we want to check for mortality, in the uh, first linear model, you remember it was the linear model without any random effects, we see that the residuals appear to be normally distributed and the p-value is high, which is good. And it is done by Shapiro test. However, if we check the normality of the second model, you remember, we just saw the plot, we see that the residuals are not normally distributed and the p-value of the Shapiro test is low. However, as the author of the package states, you better always compare the visual inspection to the Shapiro test and not just trust the test, because Shapiro test always give you a significant value as soon as the data is big. For example, 100 or 1000 observations. That's why the visual inspection, like we just saw on the big picture, is very important. But we don't need the big picture. Sometimes we can check normality of our model and plot it simply by wrapping the check normality function into the plot function. And voila, we see the same plot we just saw on the big picture plot. The residuals are skewed to one side. The same is with the collinearity. We first check the collinearity of the first model and the variation inflation factor is below 5, which is a low correlation and the package even shows you this. If we check the second model, the package shows you that there are some variables or interactions between variables which show high correlation and some of them are still acceptable. For example, the weight of the car in this case. Again, we can check the collinearity visually by simply wrapping the uh, check collinearity function into the plot function. And if we plot this, we see already familiar plot. The same stuff with heteroscedasticity. We can check one, and in the first model we had the heteroscedasticity, we saw it, and in order to remind you of this, we can plot them. You remember that the residuals were wider towards the end of the plot, but the residuals of the second model were not really heteroscedastic, and that is why the p-value is b. We also can check outliers. If we take just one column of the dataset, we can check outliers by simply writing function check outliers. It couldn't be simpler than that. And we even can plot the outliers. It even tells you what kind of method we used. We can use a different method, for example, let's say interquartile range. But if we use the interquartile range, we have only one outlier. After checking outliers, we also can check for singularity. It is an important assumption where the model is usually overfitted and it is not performing well and has a low power. That's why if we check for the uh, model assumptions in the uh, first model, we see that singularity is not present. So the assumption is false. However, here I tweaked the first model by simply introducing the interaction between all of the terms and if you run this model the results also tells us that we have some kind of trouble here and if we check singularity with the performance package it will show us that there is singularity and we have to deal with it the best way to deal with it is just to simplify the model or reduce the number of terms in it all right this is pretty much it if you like this video and want to see more 
more, consider to like and subscribe and leave me a comment about the package you find the most useful. So, thank you for watching guys and see you next time. Bye-bye!